Hello. Hi. Hi, Katrina. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm also good. Um, okay, so um, what were we doing last time? Oh, uh, so for homework, I did... Um, well, let me see which number. I don't know. Six? I yes, I believe so. Okay, that's the last <laughs> test paper which I had given you. Um, all right, <clears throat> so let's check out test paper six. So you have got the answers in front of you? Uh, no. Okay. All right, so you can quickly, I'm sending you the answers also. I mean to say, you know, whenever I send the question paper, that's having uh, one more PDF that's having the answers also. If uh, it will be possible, you can check it out after you're working and then you can check out the score and then we can uh, go on directly uh, focusing on those questions which are wrong or which need some explanation or which you feel that we need more work to do. Okay. So we are having no calculator portion here. Is the first question, uh, oh, I have reached to this calculator. Okay, so is the first question um, like Salim something? Yes, wants to purchase tickets, yes. Oh, uh, okay. So let's quickly check out the answers. So what's the answer for one? B. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, move on. Next, it's two. Two B. Mm-hmm, three. 3C. But the answers which are right and you feel that you need some more explanation, you can mark that also. Okay. Okay, I will. 4. A. Mm -hmm. 5. Uh, D. Correct. 6. A. Mm -hmm. 7. C. 8. B. 9. C. 10. D. Oh, cool. 11? Um, A. Okay, mark it. Okay. 12. 12. D. 13. A. 14. A. 15. D. 16. Um, oh, this is for response. I put 8. Yeah, that's also one of the answers. That's correct. 17. Okay. 15 fourths. Right, 18. 30 units. Correct, 19. Um, I got 1.5 liters. Cool, right, 20? Yeah, I thought I did really good. Um, 20, I got one sixth. Amazing, yeah, you're having only one question wrong in the no calculator portion. Yeah, and that's, that's a great thing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so should we first discuss that no calculator portion question here? Yes. And all of them, like, I felt, like, really confident on. Like, it wasn't just guessing. Like, that's, I do all of them. that's so much, you know, I mean, to say soothing for me, or you can say, you know, I yeah. feel so delighted to hear this. That's great. Uh, now, the comfortableness will go on increasing and we believe that if you, you know, do a little bit of extra effort, then there's, you know, we can have the perfect score. Or at least even maybe like very, very close to perfect score. Mm -hmm. So question number? Um, 11. Okay. It was something about parabolas. Right. Perfect. So we have already uh, discussed about the different representations of parabola, parabola, a quadratic equation. For example, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Mm -hmm. 
this is one of the representation of a parabola and um, you know a b c are the constants and you can get so many things from that a b c uh, this is one of the representations. And the uh, second representation is um, factored form, y equals like x minus some number times x minus some another number. Those two numbers are the, you know, uh, x intercepts where the parabola is cutting the x axis. This is another representation of a parabola. And if you're having a there, so you can put it on, in the front. And the third representation is, uh, y equals x minus h whole squared plus k. And if you're having a also, then you can put it at the front. But h and k are the vertices, oh. uh, are the coordinates of the vertex, sorry, are the coordinates of vertex. And vertex can be either the minimum value the minimum value of the parabola or the maximum value of the parabola. Okay. So these are the three representations of a parabola. Um, now I just wanna, you know, have some uh, insights about a uh, little bit about all the three. Um, so what information can we get from the standard, standard form of the parabola? Like, how many info, you know, how many things can we grasp or you know uh, take from the standard form of the parabola by these a b c um, first of all we'll be able to know the shape of the parabola if a is positive oh then it's upward and if a is negative downward if a is greater than one then it'll be more contracted. Okay. And if A is less than one, it'll be expanded. Okay. Right. The same thing will happen with the negatives also. And um, it will also give us the C. What is the C? Is that the Y intercept? Correct. It's Y intercept. It's the place where the parabola is cutting the Y, y axis. So, um, this is the y intercept. You're going to get y intercept. And what else can we get from this? We can use the quadratic formula and then we can get the, you know, the roots. And uh, we can understand what are the two roots of this parabola. And we can also analyze whether the roots are real or they are imaginary by using the discriminant. Discriminant is always equal to b squared minus 4ac. You can have this thing marked here. Discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. And if that is greater than 0, you'll be having two real roots. Okay. That means the parabola will be cutting the x-axis at two points. And if that is equal to 0, you'll be having one real root. That means the parabola will be just touching the x axis at some point. So it'll be having you'll be having only one real root. And if that is less than zero, then you'll be having no real root. That means the parabola will be above the x axis. And if that is above the x axis, then it's not touching the you know the x axis. That means it's not having any real root. It's having imaginary roots. Okay. I and what else can it give us? It can give us sum of roots that I have told you it's negative B divided by A. Mm -hmm. It can also give us product of roots. That's equal to C, C divided by A. Oh, okay. So sum of roots, product of roots. It can also give us the x, the the the, the x coordinate of the vertex, and that's negative b divided by two a. That's the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay. So there are so many things which can be uh, calculated from the standard form. 
x coordinate of the vertex is negative b divided by 2a. And in order to calculate the y coordinate, you'll be plugging in that value, which you got for x coordinate. You'll be plugging it in the equation and you'll be getting the y coordinate. Correct? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So this is about like the information which we can get from the standard form. And from the factored form, you can directly get the two values x is equal to like m or x is equal to like n, those two points where this is cutting the x-axis directly. And the third one, which is here, I think, which is the question here. From that, you can directly get the coordinates of the vertex. That is h comma k. And do you know it's, yeah, okay. So that means if y equals x minus 3 whole squared minus 4, what will be the coordinates of the vertex? 3, negative 4. Correct. 3, negative 4. Absolutely right. Now, let's check this question. What is this question telling you? Uh, can you read the question first? Yes. The vertex of the parabola in the xy plane above is 0, comma c. Which so, of the following is true so that about the parabola? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first of all, you know, we'll be understanding the question. So it's telling you the vertex of the parabola is zero comma C and that's here. This is the point C and that's zero comma C. And that's the y-intercept, which we have, which we already know. And then it's telling you which of the following is true about the parabola with the equation, this thing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's do this thing here on the calculator in order to make you understand what really this thing is going on here. Okay, one second. So the, the, the easiest and the simplest parabola on this earth is y equals x squared. You don't have b, you don't have c, you have simply, you know, the first term of the of the standard form and a is equal to one. This is the simplest parabola. Okay, starting at the origin and like this. Now, if you want to shift this parabola to up or down, that means you are changing the y intercept. You understand? Yes, and you're changing your c. Exactly. That means if you if you want to if you want to make it up plus three, it'll go up three units. See. If you want to make it go down, then subtract, like whatever, five, enter. So you're going down negative five, right? Right. Okay, now let's go back to the previous parabola here. Now, if you want to move it to the right or left, what, do you need, what we need to do? We need to do the opposite of addition or subtraction for the x. Right. That means if you want to shift it to the right, you're subtracting some number, for example, two, put it in the parenthesis and then enter. Okay. So shifting the parabola to the right means you're subtracting two. So you're subtracting the number and shifting the parabola to the left means you are adding the number. So if you want to shift the parabola left five units, what should I write? Um, left five units, so you do x plus five. Correct. That's it here. So you're shifting left five units, so it's x plus five. Okay, now if the parabola needs to be put upside down, what you'll do? Um, negative one. Right. Or negative x. Minus Correct. Two. Negative times this whole thing, it'll be going up, down. Now, okay, let's come back to the previous parabola, the simplest one. I just want to put the parabola um, three units to the right and four units up. I want to have the parabola three units to the right and four units up like this here, this point, three comma four. 
this should be the according to the vertex. What should I do? Um, do you want it upwards or downwards? I have shown it here. Three comma four. This should be oh, oh upward, okay. upwards, upwards, okay. upwards. Yeah. Upwards. So um you have x minus three squared plus four. Okay, x minus three squared plus four. Enter. Amazing, you're right. You're correct. Now, if I want to make it downwards, then I'll be putting it negative, right? Right. So negative 3x. It's like x minus 3 squared. Cool. So let's check out the question. Which of the following is true about the parable of the equation y equals negative a times x minus b squared plus c? Well, you know the vertex is bc. Right. And a is negative, so it's downward, so it's b. It's a vertex is BC and the graph opens downwards. Amazing, you're right. So you have done this yourself. <laughs> it, it makes sense now. Great. Now we can, um, I think you can do all the questions related with this, right? Parabola? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So let's go to the calculator portion. Anything here which you want to discuss? Any question? No, I actually understand. Amazing. Let's go to the calculator one. Here is um, the first question. What's the answer to the first one? A. Mm -hmm. Second. C. Third. A. Four. D. Five. B. Six. C. Seven. D. Eight. D. Nine. B. Ten. B. 11. B. 12. A D. 13. A. 14. B. 15. D. 16. B. 17. B. 18. C. 19. A. 19. Mark it. Oh, hey. So close. Okay. Um. 20, 20, a C, 21, D, 22, B, 23, C, 24, D, 25, um, B, 26, A, mark 26, 27, A, 28, A, 29 B 30 D 31 10 right 32 31 x equals 31 mm -hmm. 33 uh, I got 98 correct 34 5 36 uh, oh sorry 35 sorry oh yeah uh, 5 fourths okay 36 and then I got um, x equals 2.6. 37. 30. 38. 8. I don't believe this. Oh my gosh. I don't even... <laughs> oh. I actually understood everything. Like, if you could see my work, I wrote down my work and everything. This is so great, to tell you frankly. I'm so happy. <laughs> I actually understood it all. Like from things that you showed me, like make a graph or sub mm -hmm. substitute x or something. Oh, you have used those uh, strategies and you know yes. the concepts. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. That's wonderful. So you have missed only three questions in total out of fifty-eight. So that means you're having fifty-five out of fifty-eight. So if you'll be checking this SAT score conversion table, let's check out what that really means. Uh, out of um, 58, you're having 55. That's 790. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Out of what? Out of... <laughs> okay. So this is my, you know, great day for today. My morning has started in an amazing way. <laughs> yeah. So because this is my morning, but no doubt yeah, this, this is, is your evening. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to those two questions. Um, okay. So what was the first one? Number, oh, 
Number 19. Oh, 19. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We'll, we'll be opening our eagle's eye, we'll be focusing on the question, and then we'll be understanding it step by step, and then trying to solve it. Um, so, um, can you read the question in parts? Yes. Um, okay. An architect wants to use the riser tread formula to design a stairway with a total rise of nine feet, riser height between seven and eight inches odd number of steps. Um, which of the following must be the tread depth in inches of the stairway? Okay, so he's having some formula. Okay, is this a, is this question connected with one more question? Yes. Um, oh, 17. Oh, side. okay, okay, okay. So that means, I, yes. that means I need to have some information <laughs> prior. So we're having riser tread formula, 2H plus D equals 25. So H is the height of that, you know, stairway, and the D is the tread depth. Mm -hmm. um, and that should be this thing here, 2H plus D, 2H plus D equals 25. And then, um, and okay, now the question is, an architect wants to use the riser tread formula to design a stairway with a total rise of nine feet. Is this 25 in inches? Hmm? Is this 25 in the question? Like, is this in uh, like inches or feet I'm not or? Sure. Like, it didn't specify, so I wasn't sure. So, whenever I put it into the equation, I did nine times 12 to convert it to yeah that's what i think because first of all in the equation you're having h is the riser height in inches and d is the tread depth in inches so inches plus inches will be inches right right so i don't know why i didn't specify but but so... they how they how i think they how i mean say like they have told you that h is in inches and d is in inches so that's enough for us, right? Yeah, so that's what I did. I did 9 times You're... 12 equals 108. Correct. So that means the total rise is 108, starting from, you know, top to bottom. Doesn't that mean one of the steps you're having, uh, like etch here, etch here, etch here, etch here, etch here, whatever the number of steps you're having, multiplied by that riser height, you know, number of steps, number of those steps multiplied by the rise height will be equal to 108. Yes. Think about it. Like, you know, because this is this length, this is this length, this is this length, this is this length. So... Oh, oh I, I know what I did wrong. Oh. In the, okay, in the chart, mm -hmm. it underneath with the big paragraph, it goes 2H plus D mm -hmm. equals 25. So I mm -hmm. thought that you had to do two times the height. That's what I did wrong. <laughs> but the total rise is having different connection with the, you know, H, isn't it? Right, and um, it specifies it's an odd number of steps. Hmm. So you can even plug in the number, even, you know, the answers to, to see which one is working, I think. So total rise of nine feet, a riser height between seven and eight inches. So so having you're having the riser height between seven to eight inches. Mm -hmm. So the height is in between seven to eight. Yeah, and I use 7.5. Hmm. Okay, you use 7.5. And then at an odd number of steps. So the number of steps are odd. Um, okay, with the architect's constraints, which the following must be the tread depth in inches of the stairway. So that means whatever the tread depth is, if when you plug it in here, you should be getting height in between seven and eight. Oh, think about it, oh, isn't it? All I had to do was oh, plug in. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So can you try to plug in 7.2 and check out what, what is H? Mm -hmm. And this is a calculator portion. You can just, you know, do this, do this on the calculator. 25 minus 7.2 divided by 2, I think. 
50.4. That is not between 7 and 8. 25 minus 7.2 divided by 2. I don't think it's, it'll be 50.4. You are calculating the height. You are, um, com you know, confirming whether the height oh, is in not, between. Oh, no, it's because it's not 25. It says that the total rise is 9 feet. Oh, okay. So which is 108 inches. Okay, but... Okay, so... so... 8 minus 7.2 divided by 2. But this 25, what is this 25? This, not, this is not the total rise. The 25 is the total rise in like the other, um, in the other problems. Are you sure? Yes, I'm pretty sure. So if I did this correctly, then 108 minus 27.4. Let's see. I don't think so. <laughs> because uh, this 25 is actually the, you know, the part of the formula. Mm -hmm. And this formula will be for all the types of the stairway designing. Oh, okay. So what does the nine feet have to do with it? Nothing? Nine feet is um, nine feet is gonna give you, um, n you know, number of steps. How much? How much? How many number of steps you'll be having, and what edge can be there? You know, that will be useful only when you are solving the two equations. But why to solve two equations if you're having the possibility that you can plug in the number and check out what is the edge? Is that in between seven and eight? Okay. So the first one. 7.2 was 8.9. So the height is 8.9, which is not in between 7 and 8. So 7.2 is eliminated. Right. And then the next choice is 7.75. So it is. Let's try 10.6 also. Okay. Seven point two. Okay, what about D? Um, five. So it's not. So out of option B and C, you have to check out which one is going to give you odd number of steps. Now, that will oh. be helpful, isn't okay. it? Yeah, I was like so confused. I was like, why? So 108 divided by 9.5, is that an odd number? Yes. How much is that? 11.3 or something. No, that's not, that's not an odd, odd number, you know? I mean, say that's not exact the exact number, you know? You can't have number of steps is 11.3. Well, 108 divided by 10.6 is 10 point something something. So are you doing something? Oh, this is the depth, sorry. Height, you had to check out the height. That's so, okay. so the height, how much height you got when you plugged in 9.5? Um, 25 minus 9.5 divided by 2? Um, 7.75. So divide 108 by 7.75. 7 7.75. 7 13.935. It's not exact number. Uh, what about when, you, when you're having the depth is 10.6, what will be the height at that time? 25 minus 10.6 divided by 2. Um, oh, it's 7.2, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 7.2. So what will be the height of that? I mean, so what will be the number of steps at that time? 108 divided by 7.2? 15. That's the exact number, right? Yes, yeah, so it's 10.6. It's 10.6. Let's check it out whether we are right. Question number 19, calculator portion. It's C. Mm -hmm. We are correct. So the thing here is plug in. When you plug in D, you'll, get, you'll be getting the H. And H is having the constraints that it is in between 7 and 8. But two options were, you know, in between 7 and 8. It, we, you know, get, you were getting the answers in between 7 and 8. But at the same time, you're having one more constraint that the number of steps is odd. So you got, you know, 7.75, you got 7.2. So when you divided the whole height, you know, the complete height 108 and then divided by 7.75, that's going to give you a number of, you know, number of edges, you know, number of steps. 
So if that is a whole number, a natural number, then that and an odd number actually, then that will be your answer. So 7.75 is not working. 7.2 is going to is giving you 15 steps. So that's why the third option was the right answer. The depth was 10.6. Okay. All right. So what was the next one? Um, number 26. The big wheel. Hmm. Okay. Uh, before reading the question, can you think of moving the gear A and uh, thinking about how many rotations gear A will be doing to complete one rotation for gear B? Um, it's having 20 teeth. Gear B is having 60 teeth. Let's forget about gear C. How many rotations, you know, will be gear A doing to complete one rotation for gear B? Think about it moving, you know, it's moving. Gear A is moving, gear B will be moving. So uh, make a, you know, this is moving like this. Tuck, 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 tuck. And then uh, this will be moving like this. 20? Mm, how many teeth gear A is having? 20. So when this will be completing one complete re re rotation, how many teeth will be completed here? Oh, 20. so three. I mean... Right, yeah. three. So three rotations of gear A will complete one rotation of gear B three rotations of gear A will complete one rotation of gear B. And when one rotation of gear B is completed, how many rotations will be completed for gear C? Six. Six. Now I'll be reading the question. If gear A, okay, the, the gear ratio, whatever the, you know, the things are here. The, if gear A, is rotated by the motor at a rate of 100 re revolutions or rotations per minute, what is the number of revolutions per minute for gear C? So we have to make this 100 and we have to check out what is the number here. Oh, so 100 uh... revolutions. Oh, then the number is um, 300 or B. Hmm, I'll be multiplying this with 100, but I need to cancel this three. So dividing by three, multiplying that with 100, dividing by three, multiplying that with 100, dividing by three. So I'll be getting 100 revolutions for the first one will be 100 over three revolutions. So the second one will oh. be three times one, three times two. 200 revolutions for the third one. Okay. Is this making sense what I did here? Yes. Because I just understood, you know, while moving one revolution, one rotation, um, or you can say, yeah, like, when you'll be completing three revolutions, one, two, three, you are completing one revolution for the bigger one, and you're completing uh, six revolutions for the third one, as you told me. Now, they are telling you that the gear A, gear A has moved 100 revolutions. So doesn't that mean this three needs to be uh, 100? And then we have to check out when this is 100 revolutions, you know, when you're moving 100 times, how many times this will be moving and how many times this will be moving. So what I did, in order to make this thing 100, I multiplied with 100, but I need to eliminate this 3, so divide by 3. Throughout, 100 divided by 3, 100 divided by 3, 100 divided by 3. Multiplication throughout. 3, 3 will cancel. So it'll be 100 is to 
100 over 3 is 2. 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 200. So right. when I'll be having 100 complete revolutions for gear A, I'll be having 100 over 3 revolutions for gear B, and I'll be having 200 revolutions completed for gear C. And that's what we need. We don't need gear B. And that's option? Um, C. Correct. So that's how we solve it. Is this clear? Okay. Yes. Great. So let's try to have some uh, more questions together so we can. Um, so any questions in this? No, I got it. Hmm. All right. So we'll be cleaning up all this and you're having 790. That's amazing. Hope. 790? Are you sure? Yes. Uh, uh, you're having only three questions wrong, isn't it? Yes. So when you're having three questions wrong, that means you're having 55, check it out. You're having 55 points out of 58. See here? Uh, Are you able oh. to see that? Yes, I see it now. Oh, oh wow. So that's what I'm saying. It's like 55 points. Oh, it's 760. Oh, okay. I was about to say, there's no way. Okay, it's okay. So it's, yeah, it's still so good, but I thought it's 790. Why is it showing 790 here? That's what I, I was thinking, because I saw it, and then I went to a chart, like, online, oh. and it's 60. Oh, okay, yeah, it's 760. Somewhere it's showing 760, and somewhere it's showing 790, whatever. Okay, so it's like 10, 10 points decreasing. All right, so 760 is also a good score. 760, yeah, you're having in most of the... 760, yeah, that's correct. 760. That's so good. <sighs> okay, so let's go to the, you know, some questions. So you have completed test paper six. Now, mm -hmm. let's go for some questions together. Okay, oh, so I'll be... Should I log, in, log out and log oh, in? Oh, yeah, exactly. Correct. Yes. Okay. 